science is pursued and then science is communicated. The way we pursue it and the way we communicate it are two different things. Communicating science is an art and that is where most of the researchers fail or find challenges. I receive hundreds of emails from students who ask me, sir, you told in that video, in this video that publish research papers and now we are publishing, we are getting rejected. So what's going on? Like, seriously, when we try to publish, these research journals are having so many, you know, um, courtesy calls or so many uh, different rules. It's so difficult to follow. And that is where I thought, why not make a video about this topic? So first things first, you all have to know that for you, it is your research, which is your life. And for them, it is just another research paper. Point number one. Point number two, you are in the business of finding unknown things and publishing about it. They are in the business of making money out of your research. Okay. But it's your compulsion that you have to publish. So obviously you have to publish. There is nothing like you should not publish. But that is what happens. They're in the business of making money from your research. Right. And they're selling membership of their journal which is not a bad thing which is a good thing so there are i think seven to ten points which i'm going to give you today in this video which will be highly beneficial these are applied methods these are um, general uh, you know do's and don'ts plus some spe specialized applied methods which i have seen my students my uh, seniors and my superior scientists applying in their research work and it has worked like a charm for them the first point I would like to make here is choosing the right research journal. Now, for example, Nature. Now, Nature has got several journals under its belly, right? So you have to apply into the right journal which matches with your research. If it is not matching straight away, they will reject. No doubt about it. How much ever you try, you will still get, keep getting rejected. So please don't apply in a wrong journal. They are going bound to reject. Okay. The second thing is, okay, even though it is the right journal, but you have to write a compelling subject line. The title of the research paper should be compelling. But it should not be a click bit. It should not be like, okay, uh, in the title you are promising something else and uh, in the description or the abstract or the real research, it, it, it's not there, right? So, because the reviewers are going to read the entire research paper, right? And they are in the business of rejecting the such papers right and like i said title of your research paper should not be a clickbait it should be in simple terms no technical jargons and it should not promise the moon when you are delivering earth in your research okay so make sure that it is simple to understand and it is crisp concise and clear in its communication okay now let's move on to the next point the next point is address the bigger picture now these well reputed high impact journals are not looking at some small research. They are looking at some bigger impact of your research on the research world. Okay. So that kind of research will get accepted easily. So you have to show what kind of impact your research can have on the broader research world. And that should be there in the abstract. Otherwise, they will not be willing to accept that or they will say that it is too small uh, of a paper to be, be published in our journal, we are very repeated and they'll reject it. Okay. So, you know, that's the third reason they reject generally and which is address the bigger picture. Okay. Address the bigger picture, how your research will have a bigger impact on the research world or the world altogether. And that will attract them further to accept your research paper. Let's move on to the fourth point now. Fourth point is the most crucial point. Communicate in simple terms. Do not use too many technical jargons and make sure that you are writing in a lucid English, uh, English which is understandable and acceptable. Now, to make sure you do that, we are conducting a scientific writing workshop, which is scheduled for uh, in the middle of, middle of March, uh, I think around 18th of March. You can register for that workshop where we are going to train you on how to publish the, your research paper in different uh, research journals and that workshop will be a day-long workshop on a Saturday from morning till evening and you will learn all the technicalities of how to 
uh, publish a research paper, review paper, abstract, everything you will get complete idea. So that is where you have to make sure that it has to be in simple lucid language, no, not too much of technical jargons so that it gets accepted easily. So that's my fourth point. Let's move on to the fifth point. The fifth point is provide evidence and provide data to back your evidence. Now, whenever you are doing research, obviously you will have data. So you must provide the evidence at the right pl place in your research and also make sure that they are supported with the findings or the data and the data can be in various format it can be in a table tabular format pie chart bar graph whatever format you choose but it has to be understandable not too many uh, complicated graphs are required but simple graphs which supports your evidence should be more than enough to get accepted the sixth point is make your paper attractive now generally papers are boring right and why they're boring is because you have too much of text and less of images or less of less of uh, tables and stuff like that. So always make sure that you are adding relevant images, relevant tabular format, relevant graphs, re relevant flowcharts, which will help you strengthen your pitch when you are, you know, uh, sending the paper to the editor, editor or the reviewer. Now remember one thing: you are not writing for the audience here you're writing to convince the editor and the editor must get attracted and that is why your research paper should be visually appealing and that's very very important and that's my sixth point now let's come to the seventh point and which is address potential limitations or potential criticisms now every research which we do will always have a limitation maybe there is a temperature limitation maybe there is a, uh, a sample limitation some kind of limitation because of which uh, this particular uh, criteria may not fit in in other labs because generally what other researchers would do is they will uh, you know read your research paper and try to replicate that in their lab right so if you mention your limitations if you mention possible criticisms to your research that reflects that you are a neutral person you are trying to reflect the right things to the reviewer and to the general audience and that way the reviewer will get impressed, the editor will get impressed and the acceptance rate is higher. So make sure that you also mention potential limitations or potential criticisms to your research so that you reflect your research paper as a neutral research paper which is not biased towards your research, instead it is biased towards science. Let's move on to the next point. The next and simple point is follow the journal's guidelines. Now every journal, as soon as you try to submit, they'll have a big list of you know, SOPs, standard operating procedures, which you should follow or guidelines. So please follow the guidelines which they are giving, read it by heart, understand it, and then accordingly you should customize. So if you are trying for nature, nature has different rules. If you're trying for any other organization, they have different rules. So always make sure that you're applying to the right research journal and you're also following all their guidelines. That's my eighth point. Let's move on to the ninth one. The ninth one is seeking feedback and that is very, very important. You should reach out to experienced friends, mentors, professors or scientists in your circle, in your network and show your manuscript to them even before you submit and take their opinion where you are going wrong because the points which I told you are general generalized guidelines. They will be in a better position to give you better idea on how to further improve it. So always do networking, reach out to professors, reach out to scientists, reach out to friends and mentors who can guide you and who can further give you customized help in this regard. Tenth and last point for you is be patient. Have patience. Generally, it takes up to six months also and sometimes eight months also for your research paper to get accepted. There are two reasons for that. The sec first is if it is a high impact journal, from the whole across the world, people are sending research papers. So there can be a backlog. And the second is after the first revision, generally the reviewers will pass on it, pass it on to the senior reviewer or the editor. So it takes a bit of time. There, there is a three-step process in general in all these uh, uh, high impact journals before they are accepted. So that is the two reason because of which it can take six to eight months also. So, it's, so you have to make sure that you are patient, you are waiting and you, are, you don't panic and you don't start submitting in multiple journals. You should submit in one and wait for it unless it gets rejected. And that is one thing we should know. Now, another very important caution for all of you is never ever publish in some predatory journal or somewhere you can pay and publish because that is not the right way. They must review it. They must be of a high impact factor. The list of high impact factor journals I'll give you in the description. Please check that out and let me know what kind of videos you want to see or uh, watch in the future at Biotechnica. We'll definitely make it. Remember, your research must be pu published, otherwise it's of no use. 
you must publish publish it in the high impact factor journals and that is how you can make a global career for yourself remember your research paper gets higher citations that gets added into your cv and that further adds into your employability index so you must publish you must make sure that it is published in the right journal and that's how you grow thank you so much for watching this video see you in the next one till then take care namaskar